My original intent for this video was to explain how you build the ultimate antioxidant formula. However, the number of ingredients involved would only allow me to spend 30 to 40 seconds talking about each one in a 15 minute video. And the reality is some of the ingredients such as green tea, curcumin, chaparral could each warrant their own video. In the end, a discussion of the individual ingredients in such a formula would be too surfacy, too boring. So let's do something different. Let's explore what antioxidants are and focus on three key points that are particularly fascinating and almost no one talks about. And then at the very end I'll list out the ingredients for you that I think make sense in an ultimate full spectrum antioxidant formula. You can go to my written report on antioxidants for complete information on why I chose each of those specific ingredients and exactly what they do as well as the studies that support them. So let's begin. When I first started designing antioxidant formulas some 30 years ago, it was virgin territory and very few people played in it. Today, everyone involved with health and nutrition does antioxidants. Even generic vitamin companies are mindlessly throwing them into their formulas for label appeal. Unfortunately, that also means there's now a great deal of confusion and misleading information out there on antioxidants. So let's begin by clearing some of that up and that begins with the discussion of free radicals. Free radicals are especially reactive atoms or groups of atoms that function as cellular killers. They work in different areas of the body and on different cells and even different parts of cells. In fact, even on your very DNA. Scientists now know that free radicals play a major role in the aging process as well as in the onset of cancer, heart disease, stroke, arthritis, and possibly allergies and a host of other ailments. There are four primary sources of free radicals. The environment. We're talking about air pollution, cigarette smoke, pesticides, radiation, etc. Internal production. Our bodies constantly produce free radicals as a byproduct of normal metabolism. Stress factors. Aging, trauma, medications, disease, infection, and stress itself all accelerate the body's production of free radicals by as much as 800%. Chain reactions. Free radicals steal electrons from other molecules to balance themselves out. This initiates a chain reaction in which each new radical seeks to balance itself by stealing its own electron from a neighboring molecule. One free radical can unleash in a fraction of a second a torrential chain reaction that produces a million or more additional killer free radicals, each out hunting for living cells to destroy like a herd of sharks in a mindless feeding frenzy. Your body is constantly replacing and repairing free radical damaged cells, but ultimately can't keep up. By supplementing with antioxidants, we help our bodies stay ahead of the carnage. Antioxidants, quite simply, are compounds that render free radicals harmless and stop the chain reaction formation of new free radicals. Many scientists now believe that free radicals are the major villain in both aging and the diseases associated with aging. The number of cells destroyed over the years by free radicals is enormous. Free radicals literally eat away the major organs of the body. The use of antioxidant supplements at maintenance level may provide the ultimate defense against premature aging and a compromised immune system. At therapeutic levels, antioxidants may play a significant role in reversing many of the effects of aging and disease. Now, you remember at the top of the video where I told you we were going to focus on three key points that are particularly fascinating and that almost no one talks about? Well, here comes the first one. When it comes to free radicals and antioxidants, it's not a simple case of black and white. Shades of gray are very important in this discussion. For example, although free radicals likely play a major role in the onset of many diseases, including cancer, and antioxidants can offer protection from them, things change if your immune system is under attack or if you get cancer. Then, in some cases, the roles reverse. Take the superoxide radical. Superoxide is biologically toxic and extremely harmful to healthy cells. However, it is also deployed by the immune system to kill invading microorganisms. To put this in simple terms, white blood cells produce oxygen-free radicals as an essential tool in the efficient killing of microbes. In this instance, free radicals are not bad, in fact they're an essential part of your immune system and good health. And when it comes to cancer, we see the same dichotomy. In fact, it has been recognized that the primary medical therapy used to treat cancer, radiation and chemotherapy, 
work by causing oxidative stress that ultimately kills cancer cells. The idea is that by their aggressive nature, cancer cells suck up more of the free radicals these treatments produce than healthy cells, thus they die first, hopefully, allowing the healthy cells to survive and recover. This is the reason many oncologists insist that you stop taking any antioxidants while on a chemotherapy regimen so as not to undermine the treatment. Well, there are indications that your immune system uses the same strategy in certain cases, just more targeted when fighting cancer. In fact, some researchers go so far as to say that inhibiting antioxidants might be a useful therapeutic approach for dealing with cancer in humans. Now, don't freak out and overreact. There is no absolute rule here as some antioxidants aggressively attack cancer cells themselves and are key to recovery. So what do you do? Well, to paraphrase Kenny Rogers, when it comes to free radicals and antioxidants, you have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. You have to know when to take your supplements and know when to run. In other words, you use full spectrum antioxidant formulas to prevent disease and accelerated aging, but if you come down with an infection or cancer, you stop taking full spectrum antioxidants and turn to targeted antioxidants to specifically attack those diseases. And now we come to our second key point. There is a huge difference between the natural and synthetic forms of an isolated antioxidant component, or vitamin for that matter. Although they may be chemically identical, they are structurally different. That is, the atoms within the two molecules are arranged differently, and that matters hugely when it comes to how they behave in the body. Nevertheless, researchers seem to prefer testing synthetic versions of isolated ingredients rather than naturally extracted versions. For example, the studies frequently used in trashing beta-carotene used synthetic beta-carotene, and the studies cited in trashing vitamin E used synthetic DL-alpha tocopherol. The bottom line is that any study that tests a synthetic version of any nutraceutical cannot ethically claim that their study applies to the natural version, let alone to all antioxidants or vitamins, etc. All they can state is that the synthetic version performed badly. And then there's ORAC. ORAC is a standardized test adopted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture to measure the total antioxidant potency of foods and nutritional supplements. The ORAC unit has become an accepted industry standard for measuring antioxidants. ORAC stands for Oxygen Radical Absorption Capacity. It provides a precise way, with certain key limitations, of establishing the free radical destroying power of a particular food or supplement. Sounds simple. The higher the ORAC value, the more potent the antioxidant. And many companies pitch the value of their antioxidants by virtue of how high their ORAC numbers are. Unfortunately, the reality is more complex. And here comes our third key point, which by the way is several parts. Even if we assume that the tested ORAC values are accurate, it is important to understand that having a high ORAC value in and of itself does not confer any advantage. That's because not all antioxidants that are confirmed as present in a test tube can be absorbed and utilized by the human body. It doesn't matter how high the value is in a test if it doesn't work in the body. Also, different antioxidants target different free radicals. Taking a supplement with an ORAC value of 17,000 that targets one group of free radicals still leaves you vulnerable to the ones not targeted. And different antioxidants work in different areas of the body. The herb ginkgo biloba, for example, works in the brain and cardiovascular system, whereas curcumin is active in the colon and silymarin in the liver. Again, having 5,000 ORAC units working in the brain isn't much consolation if you have liver problems. ORAC value then tells us only a very small part of the story. Saying that pycnogenol is 20 times more powerful than vitamin C, for example, is meaningless when it comes to scurvy. In that regard, vitamin C is infinitely more powerful than pycnogenol. Or to say that mangosteen is 10 times stronger than noni is also meaningless. When it comes to raising nitric oxide levels, noni is infinitely stronger because mangosteen doesn't do that. On the other hand, mangosteen appears to have much stronger antipathogenic activity than noni. So ORAC value by itself presents a very incomplete picture. Finally, there is a limit to how much you can benefit from an increased intake of antioxidants. The maximum number of ORAC units the body can handle in a day is about three to 5,000 units. 
This is because the antioxidant capacity of the blood is tightly regulated. So there's an upper limit to the benefit that can be derived from antioxidants. Taking 25,000 ORAC units at one time, as some manufacturers claim their antioxidants do, would be no more beneficial than taking a fifth of that amount, at least in terms of its ORAC value. The excess is simply excreted by the kidneys. Let me rephrase this to make it even clearer. Taking more than three to 5,000 ORAC units a day of the same antioxidant is a bit like using a tank to go to the grocery store. It's overkill. And promoting these super high numbers in advertising is a bit like a car dealer trying to convince you to buy that tank for your grocery shopping in the first place. It's less than honest. So that covers our three key points. Now, at the top of this video, I told you that we'd spend a little time talking about what goes into an ultimate full-spectrum antioxidant formula. Well, now's that time. First, you need to understand that it's virtually impossible to get all of the antioxidants you need from diet alone. You'd simply have to eat too much food to cover the full spectrum of antioxidants necessary to deal with today's lifestyle. To get full-spectrum protection, you have to supplement. Look for a formula that provides as wide a spectrum of antioxidants as possible so they work in every area and every cell of your body, even reaching down into your very DNA. Look for a formula that uses antioxidants to complement each other rather than duplicate each other. Opt for natural over synthetic. Remember, although synthetics may be chemically identical, they are structurally different and that matters hugely when it comes to how they behave in the body. Look for a formula that avoids all pixie dust ingredients. If an antioxidant can't fit into the formula because it requires too many milligrams, it shouldn't be in the formula at insufficient levels simply to look good on the label. You will need to take those antioxidants separately. And look for a formula that uses full complexes where feasible. Which brings us to the question of isolates. It is impossible to even come close to fitting the variety of antioxidant protection you need at adequate levels into one supplement unless you use some standardized herbs and isolates. The trick is to use only natural isolates, not synthetics. Get as complete a complex as you can, even when using isolates. Take advantage of the synergistic effect that many antioxidants share with each other. For example, zeaxanthin and lutein reinforce each other, as do curcumin and green tea. With that in mind, here is a list of the antioxidants that I think should be included in an ultimate full-spectrum formula. Natural vitamin A carotenoid complex as alpha-beta-carotene, N-acetylcysteine, L-methionine, quercetin, ginkgo biloba, resveratrol, curcumin C3 complex, green tea extract, bilberry, tocotrienols, oligomeric proanthocyanidins from grapeseed extract, chaparral extract, superoxide dismutase as water dispersible granules as opposed to oil based, arlipoic acid, lutein, lycopene, bioperin, biotin, zeaxanthin, catalase, and selenium as methoselenocysteine. As I mentioned at the top, to understand why each of these specific ingredients was chosen and exactly what they do as well as the studies that support them, you'll need to go to my written report on antioxidants. To be sure, there are other antioxidant ingredients that are well worth taking. They aren't included in this formula for the simple reason that the quantity needed for those antioxidants to be effective is too large to be incorporated into a full spectrum formula. They need to be taken separately or in larger capacity formulas that you can take by the scoop. Some of these include full complex natural vitamin E, vitamin C, L-carnosine, and red raspberry seed extract, just to name a few. In conclusion then, unless you're dealing with cancer or microbial infection, a good full spectrum antioxidant formula should play a key role in your daily health supplement regimen. Find a formula you like and use it daily. Remember it is a supplement program used to supplement an antioxidant-rich diet, not to replace it.